Although you would primarily associate adjustment layers with photo and image editing software, they are universally available in all the Affinity apps, which means you can easily apply non-destructive adjustments to any type of layer within your designer documents. I'll show you some examples. This illustration is contained within an artboard called Main Design. With the artboard selected, I can go to Layer, New Adjustment, and I'll experiment with a basic brightness contrast adjustment for now. I can push the brightness up using the top slider, then perhaps introduce slightly more contrast. On the Layers panel, we can see that the adjustment layer is sitting above a layer called Texture, which is adding a textural overlay with a linear burn blend mode. I can experiment with what is called the Z order of the layers by click dragging and moving them. So I'll click drag the brightness contrast layer and drag it underneath the texture layer. Then release the mouse button. We'll now see the tones change noticeably here. This is because the brightness contrast adjustment is no longer affecting the texture layer because it is underneath it, but it is still affecting the design elements and background layers. Now I'll add another adjustment. First, I want to make sure I've selected the main design artboard layer. This is because adjustment layers will child layer into whichever layer you currently have selected. Because for this example, I want to adjust all the design elements, it makes sense to add a new adjustment at the top of the artboard that contains all of this layer work. I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment again, and this time I'll add a recolor adjustment. This is particularly useful for design work when you want to quickly add a monochromatic color cast or tint. I'll move the hue slider to change the color to a light blue. Then I can bring the saturation down to around 30% to reduce the color intensity. You can also experiment with blend modes when applying adjustments. For example, if I change this recolor adjustments blend mode to lighten, it completely changes the look and feel of the artwork. I can then experiment with the saturation slider to vary the result. Adjustments are entirely non-destructive. This means I can easily hide the recolor adjustment to disable its effect entirely. And I can show it again to bring the effect back. Clicking on the adjustment icon will bring the dialog back up allowing us to change the parameters at any time. So here, for example, I'm just changing the hue to experiment with the color tint. Then I can close the dialog again once I'm happy with the result. And I can experiment further by hiding that initial brightness contrast adjustment. And this is what the recolor adjustment looks like without the brightness contrast adjustment. So what I might do is show that adjustment again go back into the brightness contrast dialog and just bring the brightness down slightly and perhaps increase the contrast further. Now, although adjustments child layer into the selected layer by default, you can also drag them out and have them affect multiple layers simultaneously, or even in this case, multiple artboards. For example, here I will add a white balance adjustment which will child layer into the artboard I currently have selected. Without even having to expand the artboard layer, I can click drag the white balance thumbnail here and drag it out, then release the mouse button to place it at the top above all the artboards. Now I can move the white balance slider to quickly change the relative color temperature of all the artboards. Then I can use the tint slider to control the temperature bias towards magenta or green. Again, this approach is completely non-destructive, so I can easily hide the adjustment, show it again, and click the thumbnail icon to access the dialog if I want to adjust the settings. Finally, adjustment layers can also be applied selectively by taking advantage of their inbuilt masks. Here is a good example. I'll add a black and white adjustment to this top-level artboard. Then I'll decrease the red slider, bring the blue slider down to around minus 38%, then bring the cyan slider down as well. 
I now need to use the paintbrush tool to subtract from the adjustments mask. To access this tool, I'll switch to the pixel persona up here. Then select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel on the left. I need to increase the brush width and decrease its hardness. Now I could do this on the context toolbar up here, but I can also make use of the keyboard and mouse modifier. I can hold Ctrl and Option on Mac, Ctrl and Alt on Windows, then click drag to the right to increase the width, and drag up to decrease the hardness. Then I can let go of the mouse button and the modifier keys. By default, my active color is already set to black, but you can change it here or on the color panel if required. When painting with black, we subtract from a mask. So I can just left click and drag and just paint away into the center of the design here. Reducing the hardness has resulted in a nice soft edge, which causes the color to graduate nicely into black and white. To add back into a mask, I can change the active color to white. A quick shortcut for toggling between the two assigned colors here is X on the keyboard. Do be aware, however, that the colors may still be set from any previous work that was being done on the design. Here, I was working with a slightly off-white color. You can see here on the color panel, it's not quite pure white. So I'll change this here to make sure it is absolutely pure white. Then I can paint over the design to bring back the effect of the adjustment over these areas. You can also isolate the grayscale representation of the mask, which helps to visualize its blending. To do this, you can Option click on Mac, Alt click on Windows, over the mask thumbnail. Then here, I can fine tune my painting on the mask. To exit isolation mode, you can click onto another layer entirely, or just Option click on Mac, Alt click on Windows on that same mask thumbnail. And there we go. That was a look at adjustment layers in Affinity Designer, including how to mask them to apply them selectively to areas of your design. Thank you for watching.